Let's now examine the sp3 hybridized orbital in the context of methane. In this case, we will mix all three 2p orbitals with the 2s orbital on the carbon atom. This is facilitated by promoting one of the paired electrons in the 2s orbital to the empty 2p orbital. The four hybridized orbitals are written as a linear combination of 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pz, where the coefficients in front of each atomic orbital will tell us how much of each atomic orbital is in each hybridized one. We can then express the bonding molecular orbitals as a linear combination of the 1s orbital on each hydrogen with one of the four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Let's start by first drawing a picture of this problem so that we can then define certain terms that we'll be able to cancel out immediately. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our xz plane. And why we're doing this is because we're going to align one of our sp3 hybridized orbitals along the z-axis and then we're going to define our second one to then be along the xz plane. We then have two others where one is going to be coming out and one of them is going to be going in. And since in this problem what we're trying to do is we're just trying to determine, we're trying to predict what the shape is, well, we only want to find out what the angle between these two are, which we know already to be 109.5 degrees. And so we actually need to solve for, for two of these molecular orbitals. And the two that we're going to look at specifically is this one that points in the upward z direction and this other one that points or that's fixed or that lies along the xz plane. By orienting our molecule in this way we can actually simplify our two C, our C1 which I'm going to define as the blue one and C2 is the green one or in this case C1 since it's going to be pointing directly along the z-axis well I'll have A1 times the 2s orbital plus b1 times the 2p um, x orbital plus b or sorry c1 times the 2p y orbital plus d1 times the 2p z orbital well in that case since it's pointing along the z axis and that means there's no possibility of having any mixing of the px and any mixing along the py because that would mean that that orbital would have some directionality pointing in either of those Cartesian directions. And we know that it doesn't since again we've oriented it along the z-axis. So it can't be pointing in that way. So that means our C1 is only going to have two terms. Our C2, so our second hybridized orbital, again we have A2 times 2s plus B2 times 2px plus C2 times 2py plus D2 times 2pz. Well in this case what we can do is we can cross off this 2py term, and that's again because we've forced our arc C2, our second hybridized orbital, to point in or to lie along the zx plane, which means it has no component in the y direction. And so again, we can just immediately cross off any um, term that has to do with the 2py orbital, and so in this case we could set C2 to be equal to zero. One other assumption that we can also immediately make has to do with the 2s orbital what we can basically say is that since the 2s orbital is spherically symmetric and that we're breaking it up into four pieces and these pieces should be equal and there's no reason why the the a1 or the a2 should be any different and a3 shouldn't be different from those and a4 shouldn't be different and that since we know that the 2s is, is normalized that means that these coefficients must also be normalized which means that the addition of the squares of all of them and the reason why they're squared is because, sorry, that should be a 2, but the reason why they're squared is that whenever we do this normalization, we have 2s star times 2s. And so any coefficients that are out in front also end up being squared, or they end up getting squared. But what that then effectively tells us is that since a1 is equal to a2, which is equal to a3, which is equal to a4, then we can just say, well, that's actually just 4 times a squared is equal to 1, which means that a is equal to one half. So with that result we actually now know what A1 is, we know what A2 is, and so we're almost done actually completely knowing C1 because all we need to do now is just find what D1 is. And to do that we can just normalize E Z1. So let's do that integral. 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, 
and we're going to have C1 times C times R squared um, sine theta dr d theta d phi and that's equal to 1. We still keep this integral 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi let's explicitly write in um, c1 so we've got 1 half times 2s star plus d1 2pz star and I'm going to have 1 half times 2s plus d1 times 2pz. And that again is going to be multiplied by r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And that's equal to 1. I'll foil out these terms. Integral between 0 and infinity. Integral of 0 to pi. Integral of 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to get 1 quarter 2s star times 2s plus 1 half d1. 2s star 2 2pz plus d1 over 2 2pz star 2s plus d1 squared 2pz star 2pz and that's again multiplied by r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi and that's equal to 1. I can now apply these integrals to these four terms. I know that 2s star times 2s, they're normalized, so that integral will equal to 1. 2s star times 2pz, they're orthogonal, so that integral is equal to 0. 2pz star times 2s, that integral is also going to be equal to 0 because they're orthogonal. 2pz times 2pz, they're normalized, that's going to equal to 1. And so the result that I'm going to be left with is 1 quarter plus d1 squared is equal to 1. And so what that means is, is that when I simplify this, I'm going to end up getting a term where I'm going to get d1 squared is equal to 1 minus a quarter, which then equals to 3 quarters. And so in the end, then I'm going to take the square root of that, and what that means is that d1 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now I take the positive square root for this term simply because I know that my z orbital, or this first one, this c1, is pointing in the positive z direction. And so then I take the positive value for d1 to reflect that, that it's in the positive z direction. But what this means now is that we fully define what c1 is. We know that a1 is equal to 1 half, and we know that d1 is equal to the root 3 over 2. So there's a fully defined hybridized orbital.